Call of Duty has been shit for years. How are we ever going to make a good one again? Maybe if I could walk again, we could have another game like Black Ops 1. There hasn't been a good campaign since Black Ops 2. I think it's time we change that. Put me in this bitch ass game. Connect the stories to the other Black Ops made a decade ago and forget about all the other garbage. While few will know of your struggles, rest assured. Rest Black Ops Cold War, a game that was swept under the rug and kind of forgotten about. I wasn't a big fan of the multiplayer, the zombies was okay, but what if I told you that the Cold War campaign is a top 5 story in Call of Duty history? Whoa, 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 buddy, hold your horses, let me f explain before you start acting like an onion. I'm a goddamn onion, Mason. You should know that. Nah, look at man, Woods wouldn't fucking say that. My Woods would not say that. I'm a goddamn onion, Mason. What the fuck is that? Who the fuck says that? There's no badass injury in that. It starts off with a bang. No, not that type of banging. Just like the OG games, it's using real world footage showing us what was really going on back then. The year is January 9th, 1981. Our mission is to locate two Iranian terrorists, Kavar and Kasim. And this guy talking is voiced over by none other than Creed Bratton. Man, what the? I love my job. I, I love wrestling. And we begin playing as the man himself, Alex Mason. Voiced by a, a different guy. You're seven years old, David. Stop acting like a baby. Why didn't you tell us it was an American nuke? We're also alongside the sexy man, Russell Adler. We light up the joint and man, this feels familiar. Woods, it's been a while. Well, enough, Carlos. You know Bowman, right? I tried to approach some baddies at the bar, but they all said I was a creep because I was just talking about Reznov the whole time. We walk out and see none other than Frank Woods. He's also voiced by a different guy. I'm a goddamn onion, Mason. You should know that. We shoot some people that were watching Family Guy clean up the bathroom, you dirty monkeys, before we chase Kasim throughout the rooftops and eventually corner him. We can work so <laughs> oh. You're up, Mason. All right, man, give me your big ass forehead and tell me, holy shit, there's dialogue in a Call of Duty game? We can choose to either throw him over, release him, or keep him hostage. But if you decide to kill him straight away, you don't get the info you need, so we're gonna use our intimidating force on him. Give me that side mission evidence, you mother. After we get what we need, it's time to decide what to do with him. But I decided that I was gonna be an absolute psychopath for this playthrough and just kill anyone I saw. One down, one to go. With the info they need to find the other kidnapper, Arash, we head over to a Turkish airport. We find Arash and he pulls out the strap and ISIS two of his own men in the Jeep. Then we aim at his head to take the shot. The bullet goes into the other guy's head and we have to get a rush before his plane takes off. Somehow our 1922 Jeep is able to endure hundreds of bullets and we get close enough to deploy the classic RCXD. And we blow up a mother flipping plane. <laughs> get the fuck out of here, bitch! Woods and Adler interrogate Arash in his ugly face before he tells us that a man named Perseus has a plan to destroy the West underway. Perseus is dead. Dead? <laughs> All this time and you didn't even know. <laughs> Perseus will watch the West back. <laughs> Who the fuck is Perseus? I was just about to say that. We again meet up with an old friend, Jason Hudson. Yeah, yeah, he's voiced by a different guy. Damn it! He tells us everything we need to know about Perseus and the job at hand. When all of a sudden, Ronald fuck Reagan walks into the room. Your requests are highly irregular. Most likely illegal if the press gets a hold. What the hell are you talking about? Do you know who we are? Every mission we go on is illegal. It's about preventing an attack on the free men and women of the world. Give Mr. Adler whatever he wants. We are so back. Call of Duty Black Ops finally going back to historical events, good characters, good writing. None of this Black Ops 3 and Black Ops 4 stupid garbage campaign. We head to the safe house where we meet our fellow team members. These guys are the best of the best. Handpicked by Adler from the CIA, MI6, and other factions, our goal is to stop Perseus from whatever this guy is planning to do to America. Why does he actually look like an absolute baller though? I'm just saying. Perseus was also a real Cold War rumor, so that's cool. Then it was time to finally create our character. We go by codename 
same Belle, a silent protagonist. We choose our military background, we pick out our perks, what type of psychological state we're in, as well as our gender. Uh -huh. Then Belle arrives to meet the crew. We got Jason Hudson, Frank Woods, and Mason, Lazar, the Burger Town guy. Of course, the man, Russell Adler with the blonde hair, as well as Helen Park. Well, call me Helen Keller, because I can't talk. You took my breath away. <laughs> And adding all this dialogue really makes it feel like these guys are your friends. Maybe you two have a special rapport. Keep it professional, Bell. We archive everything. CIA is like my ex-wife. Won't throw a damn thing away. We're also able to collect evidence and even unlock side missions, which I decided to do. I can't even watch TV while I'm playing a game on a TV. Hey, look, it's Ronaldo. And whatever you do, never ask him about his scar. Okay, don't worry, I won't. Do you really think that if I knew... I would tell you. Hey Adler, where'd you get that scar? Let me guess, scar. your alcoholic father beat you up? You mean this? Is it noticeable? You ever been attacked by a tiger, Bill? In order to find Perseus, we first have to retrace our steps back to Vietnam, baby. <laughs> Is that Patrick Mahomes? We relive a mission where Bell, Adler, and Sims were super close to getting Perseus. We take down a bunch of Viet Congs in the village before finding Soviet soldiers and some vital intel. Then it's time for Bell to pilot a helicopter and kill a bunch of other helicopters. We drop down to save the day, and what is that? We're carrying a nuke with us on the helicopter before. We crash down and have to hold off the Vietnamese upside down, holding on for our dear lives. Before we see our friendlies come down and rain down the air support. Adler, save me. Oh my gosh, man. How did the nuke not go off? When we get back to the safe house, we have a briefing and everyone is congratulating us for that intel we find in Vietnam, which seems a little strange. But we're now able to do some side missions. So Mason and Woods head out to Uzbekistan, where their task was taking down a man named Rudnick. A two-man army. Woods and Mason clear out the enemies while Mason is on the ground searching for Rudnick. And yeah, I mean, I don't don't know how we survive hundreds of guys shooting at us while we're out in the open but we finally make it to redneck spot and bust down the door just like i bust down the throat we take a semi good picture of his body and evacuate out this bitch. but back to the story we're now headed to east berlin to track down a man named volkov yes sir baby we're going to germany remember that mustache man our first objective is to find a man named kraus and plant a tracker on him so we can follow him to his meetup with volkov bell and adler go on a stealth mission in the tunnels before getting out to surface and bell goes to a diner to meet up with a woman named Greg. A killer. Hudson didn't reveal much. He said you're after Volkov. Yeah, Hudson does that sometimes. She hands us a note telling us where another informant was being held at and tells us to either rescue him or kill him. Damn, Greta does not care about her friends at all. But then some guy walks in and tells Kraus himself he was being followed. After that, two Stasi come in, so we gotta leave quickly and we jump out through the bathroom window. I didn't even know bathrooms could have windows. I mean, doesn't that mean they can look at you while you never mind? We go through a door, kill Stasi, but then Yo, who the f are you? Trust me, if I could kill this guy, I would. But Bell continues to sneak past patrol, going through different apartment buildings. Man, am I good at this or what? We actually find the place where the other informant Greta was talking about is being held. So Bell loads up the Glock and silently takes out the German soldiers before speaking with the man. Volkov, he's awful, speakable. If you find him, you, sh you should just kill him on sight. Please, I'm a friend. Release me? Um, is it just me or does he sound extremely it's suspicious? Okay. Look, man, you can't be trusted. <laughs> Somehow, he has a delayed reaction to dying. We sneak across more patrol in the street, but I get caught in a sticky situation. I was trying to kill these people, but things didn't go right, so it's time to fight the loud way and get out of here. We're able to finally meet up with Lazar and Park. We listen into a conversation, and it turns out Kraus is going to be going to a different meeting in a new location. One of us can sneak into Kraus's apartment. Avoiding Kraus and his wife might be the greater challenge. Bell volunteers. Man, what the? While he's doing that, I'll check around the exterior for any unwanted guests. Park, you can keep an eye on us from here. I'll try to give you my best thing. Bro, stop flirting with my wife, you creep. So we break into Krause's apartment and see his wife. But then when trying to go up the stairs, his fat ass is right there. Well, let's try this again. This time, we're using the tranquilizer to put her to sleep. Night, night, bitch. So we hide out in a room before finding a secret door in his office. Bell finds his briefcases with pictures of nukes and we plant the tracker before hearing... <laughs> Holy shit! We get caught in the apartment and wake up with Volkov and Kraus interrogating us. Perseus has been looking for this one. Yeah, it's me. I'm kind of a big deal. Perseus has a large bounty on your head. Yeah, and you've got some big glasses, Dumbo. 
She gets it easy. Do not tempt me to bring out my toys. I feel partially responsible for that. And yes, in case you're wondering, you can actually save Greta by not saying, you know, what I said. But you know what? I don't care, man. She deserved to die anyway. Right on time, our team comes back to save us. I love you, baby. We chase down Volkov throughout the warehouse. Adler tells us to kill him. Park wants him alive. But we find him, and it's too late now, buddy. Go ahead. Take me out. Was that a rhetorical question? It's what you are good at, is it not? Like I said, I'm killing everyone. You did the right thing. One of Perseus's men off the board. Is it? I wanted him alive. MI6 could have gotten so much more out of him. Can't win them all. Now let's get the hell out of East Berlin. Hey Park, shut up. So we got a bunch of nuclear weapon intel about Volkov, which leads us to a huge compound in Ukraine. We've got Woods watching us on a mountain and then... Quick thinking. Now that was a close one. Somehow, someway, we're able to sneak across all these people taking them out and hiding their bodies. Well, I, I did fail one time. Park, why are you aborting me? I thought we had something. But once we get inside... Well, this is the end. You're welcome. You're awesome. You and Woods go through a Soviet training program that mimics a real American town. Not a fucking word, Bill. I'm telling Hudson about this one. We got an arcade, a movie theater, even Burger Town. Would you like to super duper size that? We get there right as the Spentanaz are in the middle of a training simulation. So why not make it a bit realistic? We fight through the grounds, eat some Burger Town. However, when we reach a Soviet terminal, we find an audio recording of Hudson. We confirmed it. The nuke smuggled out of Berlin is a green light asset. It's one of ours. If that gets out. No one will know, not even Adler's team. The stakes are too high. High is an understatement. We're talking about an American nuke hidden beneath Berlin. It turns out Hudson was hiding information about the nuke in Berlin and it was actually an American bomb. So after we stop, drop and roll through the bullets and hop in the whip, the boys get a bit heated. You knew the nuke was from Greenlight, didn't tell us. What else are you hiding? Maybe I can knock the truth out of you. You might want to rethink that, Woods. No, don't do it, Hudson. Put it down. Everybody stand down. This little pissing match isn't gonna help us catch Perseus. Why didn't you tell us it was an American nuke? He needed us to clean up his mess. The bastard's been lying to us all along. It's not a lie. It's an omission of fact. That's what you do best, isn't it, Hudson? Manipulate people. Tell them your own version of the truth. Back in 58, the arms race was in full swing. Eisenhower was convinced if the Reds moved on Europe, we couldn't respond quick enough. So he authorized Operation Greenlight, a top secret program that placed nuclear bombs in every major European city. The ultimate countermeasure to a Soviet invasion. There's an American made nuke in the wild. And once Perseus detonates it, the United States becomes global enemy number one. We wouldn't have this problem if you'd done your job. Killed Perseus in Vietnam. Careful, Hudson. Next time, I might not stop Woods. Our next mission is in the mountains of Yamato. Yes, the snowy place in Black Ops 1 that Hudson and Weaver destroyed. So we meet up with the KGB insider and take a nostalgic trip back in time. Man, I remember this place like the back of my ass. But we have to go down a sketchy zip line and Mason nearly falls off the entire place just like that one guy back in the day. But we're able to survive the fall and we even get a little numbers easter egg. Mason sneaks around with only a knife and a crossbow like it's the Hunger Games. Before regrouping with Woods and making our way back to the chopper, we take the whole flipping building with us. Then we find out from the intel that Perseus has a list of Jargovich's sleeper agents he used back in the 1960s. We go back to the safe house where it's time to infiltrate the gosh damn KGB headquarters. Are you taking him into the KGB with you? Are you crazy? Wait for Mason or Woods to return. I don't need Mason or Woods. I need Bell. He's got the skill we need. Are you enjoying this? You're risking the entire operation unnecessarily. It's not unnecessary. It's calculated. 
I know you can do this. Hudson doesn't trust anyone he can't control. Well, thanks, man. Reports estimate a death around August of last year. Of all places, you were on assignment in Cyprus this past summer. Coincidence, wouldn't you say? Our line of work is full of coincidences. I don't like what's going on here, man. Park, stop flirting with him. She left me with this parting gift. I'm over here stroking my dick. Oof. That's a dirty gun. No, you've got it mixed up. That scar is from the bedroom last night, if you know what I'm saying. But before we go to the KGB, Woods and Mason go on another side mission to kill a former CIA operative, Robert Aldrich, who's now working with Percy. So we make it to the dirty motel this guy's staying at, and we're looking for that revenge, baby. The big LMG matches our big dick. We make it to Aldrich's room and... Boom. We take him and his guards out before getting back to the choppa and leaving. But now it's time for the big boy stuff. Perhaps the most dangerous mission we've ever done. We start off the mission as Dmitry Belikov, our inside KGB double agent. And I don't know about you guys, but I always thought Modern Warfare was in a different timeline than the Black Ops series. We get summoned to a conference and oh my, Kravchenko, Zakayev, Garbage, yeah, 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 whatever. They tell us there's a mole in the KGB and that we need to find them since we're the head of security. Well guys, sorry to break the news but it's actually me. We need to obtain a bunker key in order to let Adler and Bell in. And there's about five different ways you can go about getting it. I decided to try to free this prisoner so he can kill the only guy that has a key and we can take it right off his body. So we sneak into the records room and find a file that says they're gonna go after this man's family. And we tell him that if he helps us, we can make sure it doesn't happen. We ask him to kill General Sharkov and we unlock his cuffs while we wait. Ivanov kills Chernov with a pencil, gosh damn. And we take the key card off his body before going down to the basement and letting Adler and Bell in. We take out two guards Belikov lured in for their uniforms and now we are some nice Soviet soldiers. But when we try to go around the metal detectors, this guy insists that we can't do that. So we're forced to go through them and... <laughs> We get caught through the detector and have to put our bag on the table for inspection. This is about to be the end of us. Our boy comes through and we head to the elevator to go down. Uh, hey man. No, it's... Elevator conversation always gets awkward. You're right about that one, Adler. Zakayev gets knocked out like he's Alexander Volkanovsky, and we fight our way through all the way to the Soviet vault. Belikov gets captured, but we set off some gas and save him. Then we gear up and no Russian our way out of here before hopping in the whip and getting out of there with all the names of the sleeper agents. We find out that a Cuban facility is probably the location of the stolen nuke. But then Adler and Park go into a private room together. Hey, what are you guys doing in there? But if we listen closely, we can actually hear Adler mention our name so hey maybe we're doing something good hey woods what do you know about fidel castro so yeah castro and i have some history between us i had the opportunity to off the man but our intel was flubbed that's in a tidal wave of shit all the way up to dc so if i find out that perseus is in cahoots with castro and hudson happens to find one of my bullets in fidel's head well I say chalk it up to collateral damage. Woods, I'm not gonna lie, Hudson is a bit concerned about you, man. You got a point in saying that? You sound concerned too. If you're trying to be friendly, this is the dumbest way to go about it. <laughs> We're just fucking with you. <laughs> <laughs> you should be concerned. Hey Hudson, let me interrupt your phone Make call. Make it quick, I'm busy. As for you, the baseline expectation around here is to surpass every expectation. So from the bottom of my ass, welcome to the team. Hey, screw you! So we set out to Havana Unana. Bell uses his incredible aim to move through the building. I mean, you guys are going too slow. Look at my skills. But I'm not gonna lie, I ended up dying to a lot of proximity mines. We get on the cameras and see. 
Hold it. Adler, we have eyes on the nuclear device. Bloody hell. Someone's killing the scientists. Where? Second floor. Room 27B. Oh my gosh, that man just killed all the scientists. And then this guy hanging on for dear life reveals to us that there isn't just one nuke in Berlin, but there's a nuke below every single European city. We wait for evac on the rooftops, but things don't go according to plan. And you are forced to choose between saving Park and Lazar. Of course, I'm saving my baby. I know Lazar has been flirting with her every day. I mean, if anything, this was a great thing to get rid of the competition. We arrive back at the safe house, but instead of medical attention, we get drugged up because we are the key key to stopping Percy. No, please don't stick it in my fucking eye. Oh my goodness. It's all coming back to me. I remember the numbers. Oh wait, wrong game. They ask us to remember our time in Vietnam. So back through the jungle we go again and again and again. Adler guides us through reliving this time, but we can choose whether or not we follow him or just make up our own stuff. You're a ruin. So he took the right fork, not the trail to the left. <laughs> <laughs> the zip line nearby was the best way back to the cave. You wanted to get to that bunker as soon as possible. Bell, turn back and use the zip line to reach the bunker. Man, this is so cool. Wow, it's white in here. Christ, what's happening to him? A mild seizure. I'm having a seizure? We play through the mission again, this time as a silent assassin the night after our entire crew went down and we were the only survivors. Wake up, Bell! Oh, uh, my bad. Damn, that's some cool bomb. We go inside of a place that looks like an insane asylum. Hey, it's me. We go through the scenario once more. This time, we listen to Adler. So he took the right fork, not the trail to the left. Stop fighting me, Bella. Go right. Psych, I'm not listening to him except the, the path is blocked. So this time, we have to go down the zip line. We enter through a cave and wow, man, it's beautiful in here. Bell moves through the water, finding the bunker door. I don't care if the door was fucking stuck. Open it. Jeez, man, calm down. You eventually find a room with a table and what seems to be Perseus himself. Then we're sitting at a conference table with all these faces that we killed ourselves. And remember that the place is in Solvetsky. You gotta admit, I'm surprised. I didn't think they'd recover so fast. We tried everything. Normal forms of interrogation weren't working. Breaking a subject's will and erasing their mind is a difficult and painful process. That's a small price to pay. The CIA's mind control program has had a great deal of success with implanted memories. You want me to tell them about my time in Vietnam? Lastly, you'll need a command phrase to trigger the implanted memories. We have a job to do. We have a job to do. We have a job to do. You had to reach the Soviet bunker. It appears the subject's programming is beginning to take hold. We've got a job to do. We've known each other for years. Fought together, bled together, been through the hell of Vietnam together. We've got a job to do. And now the training's complete. We just need to give the subject a name. Bell. What the fuck? We were a puppet for the CIA the entire time. And this is when we make our most critical decision. We were one of the guys left alive when Woods, Adler, and Mason had that airplane mission. And Bell can choose whether to lie to Adler or tell him the truth. Don't worry, I'll show you all the different endings in a second. But in this playthrough, like I mentioned earlier, we are a cold-blooded killer. We can then radio a Soviet man to set up an ambush at Duga. Ago, NATO intelligence detected a powerful signal of unknown origin. The new signal created radio disruptions worldwide. Not to mention all kinds of conspiracy theories. NATO quickly tracked it to this facility in the Soviet Republic of Ukraine. The Duga Radar Array. It's an over-the-horizon radar system. Big improvement over their old missile defense tech. It uses a lot of juice. Could be used to broadcast any kind of long-range signal they want. Like detonation codes to every green light nuke in Europe. Where exactly is this thing? About 60 miles north of Kiev, between the cities of Pripyat and Chernobyl. It's nothing but thick forest for miles around. A perfect hiding spot for Perseus. But when we get there, the team gets concerned since we don't see any activity in this place. We can then signal for the ambush to commence. It's time for our revenge so that the Soviet Union can thrive. Take out Park first, then shoot Woods in the noggin. Lastly, we scrape the top of Mason's beanie before moving through with this man and finding Adler bleeding out. Glad to see you still care. Mind giving me a light? 
I'm always one step ahead of you, you dirty American. We find out the man we were talking to is Perseus himself, and he gives us the honor to detonate the nukes ourselves. I think you deserve this moment, comrade. I wish we could return to Solovetsky to watch it all unfold, but that chapter is closed now. We begin the next one together. You did well. And to think, after all this time, they still believe I'm Perseus. <laughs> As if Perseus could ever be an individual working alone. So American. My God. How many green light nukes did he detonate? All of them, Mr. President. Does anyone know the bombs were ours? Materials related to Operation Greenlight were anonymously released an hour ago, presumably by Perseus. Calls are beginning to come in from across the globe. That son of a bitch. You and Vice President Bush are to be moved to secure locations immediately. I want any business related to this thing erased forever. Everything. Can you make that happen? Of course. It's already begun. Ronald Reagan's covering it all up in typical American fashion. With that, the fall of the West commences. But there is two other endings, and one of them we can do the same thing and lie to say they're at Duga, but without setting up the ambush, and yeah, Bell dies. Or we can go with the good slash canon ending where Bell tells the truth and the team goes into Solvotsky to save the world from major destruction, stopping Perseus and what could have been World War III. Arctic air. Clears the head, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. Bell, you made two extraordinary sacrifices to stop Perseus. One was without your knowledge. The other, you made that decision at your own accord. Thanks, man. I just want you to know that this little thing that's happened with you and me... It was always for the greater good. Don't worry, I'm not gay. You're a goddamn hero, you know that, kid. Heroes have to make sacrifices. That's why when I ask you for one more, I hope you understand. What do you mean by that? It was never personal. No, don't, don't do it! And with that, Adler betrays you. So you either have to cause the United States to burn or sacrifice your own life. Hey man, Soviet Union on top. But don't worry, because Black Ops 6 is going to be featuring Adler, so maybe we'll get our revenge. Guys, if you enjoyed, make sure you subscribe to the channel, hit the like button, and click the video on the screen if you want to watch me cover the entire Black Ops 2 story. Thank you guys for watching. Please subscribe. Have a great day.